Okay, I've got seven o'clock, so we'll get this started. I call the October 12th meeting of the Plan Commission to order. And Abby, would you take the roll, please? Bruce? Here. Paulson? Here. Ramsey? Here. Schaefer? Here. Slavish? Here. And Erdman Hermans and Mayor Brower are unavailable tonight. <clears throat> All right, the first agenda item is approval of the September 28th minutes. Do we have a motion for that? Move Should approval. Move approval. Oh, I'll second, Paulson. Okay. okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Any comments, changes? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number one agenda item, set a public hearing rezoning from architectural to plan development district, GIP, Bell Farm, master planned mixed use development. Do I have a motion? I move to set a public hearing for 7 p.m. on Tuesday, November 7th. Flavish will second. Very good. We have a first uh, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number two, a certified survey map, Broad Branch Multifamily Development, 2644 Branch Street. CSM. Abby, are you gonna take that? This, this one's mine, Dan. Okay, go ahead, Mark, thank you. So, so this is before you tonight because there are two lots and also a little bit of surplus county right of way being combined to one CSM. The uh, recommendation is to approve the CSM contingent on dedication to the city of an outlet along the Creek Bank. And the reason for that is because our public works staff saw an opportunity to avoid the, the rigmarole that is, was associated with the, the stream bank restoration project by uh, Fiskars. And so what we, we see here is an opportunity for the city to take over the maintenance, maintenance along the Creek Bank. And that's why we're uh, recommending that the outlot be established. We are actually going to pay for that. The city is paying for that work to modify that CSM. So um, the developer is amenable to that. So our recommendation is to approve it with that contingency, also showing the storm sewer easement uh, on the CSM that is related to uh, the surplus right away at Century Avenue and resolution of any other staff, engineering staff recommendations associated with the creation of the outlot. And Tim Critter is here if you have any questions for him. And John Bino too. Does anybody have any questions? If there are no questions, do we have a motion? Bruce moves approval subject to engineering comments. Is there and, a second? And the, other, and the other contingency? And the other contingency. Yeah, thank you. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number three, design review for dock edition future home 23, future foam 2314 Harvey Road. And who's taking this one? Uh, that, that's me, Dan. Um, Thanks, Stephanie. Future foam, yeah, um, future foam is adding a dock um, to this middle building right here. Um, and then they're also changing their driveway. Their existing driveway is towards the back end of the lot. Um, and so they're, they're lining up their driveway to this dock addition. Um, there's this an existing office building that they're demolishing and then they're just filling in this pavement. Um, engineering did have some comments and concerns about um, having truck turning motions. Um, they would want the truck turning, you know, to stay out of Parview Road. Um, and I'm assuming that you know the the new asphalt being added is to help with the truck motions inside the parcel, but um, engineering just wanted us to have approve it with the contingencies that you know they can move trucking without being in the street. Daphne, is the only current driveway on the property on the on the north side there? Yeah, so it, it used to be up here, kind of lined up with this this northernmost building. Yeah. 
And that's generally been okay because it's just loading trucks, right? Yeah. Or I'm not sure if the existing buildings have any docks. I, I believe this is the only, only building with a dock that they're adding. I may be mistaken, but I go by there a lot, and it seems they have a whole number of trucks across the street that they do load in and out of there. And, and what was confusing to me is this shows three buildings. When I go by there, I see one building, and they're, like they're connected. And if you look through a Google Zoom, it all looks like one big building. Um, I believe it is three separate ones. Well, it, and, I mean, if I go by there, I don't see those spaces between those buildings. And, and if you do do a Google Zoom, it looks like the roofs on all three of those connect together. So that's just a, was a confusion to me because I was trying to figure out where exactly this was happening. Pete Dole has his hand raised. Pete, are you the applicant? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I am. And, and Roxanne is on as well. Um, th those three buildings, three buildings there. I don't know, maybe you're thinking of our future foam plant, which is up the street. This is the Hall Lumber property, which is just in May. Oh, okay. Um, so you. it's that further down the sense. street, John. Um, Thanks. I know where the lumber place is, so now I get it. I, th I thought this was down in the factory. Oh. Okay. okay. And right now there are no level loading docks. They were... <laughs> Go ahead. No, that totally clears it up for me because I know this property as well. I know it's empty and vacant, so thank you. Yeah, that was my confusion because the kind of red brick building, that's part of the factory? The no, one that's just up the sort street. Of, this was the lumberyard office. Is the right, that's building. the lumberyard, but up where you were talking, that red brick building that looks like it's affixed to the one more turn to the left there. Oh. Or this way. The other way, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that red brick building, that's staying, right? Because that's with the factory. Yes, that's not, that's north of the property as I understand. Yep, got it. Okay, all right, thank you. Go ahead, now, now I've got it all figured out when I screwed it all up in my head before. <laughs> Yeah, so, so this building right here will, will be coming down and then basically the driveway will be right, you know, entering in where this building is. Well, will there need to be a no parking or some length near the driveway? Because I know that there's usually a lot of cars parked there at, at various times of the day. And if you're going to pull right in, you'd have to, it's just, I'm sure Public Works has figured that out already. I think that there's just a general citywide ordinance with a specified dis, uh, distance from the driveway. So they don't generally add signage right next to um, a new entrance, but they might paint mm -hmm. it yellow yeah. for no parking. <clears throat> well, now, now that I know where it is and I've Again, on this street, some I don't think it's a real heavily traffic street, so I personally don't see any problems when you get one truck at a time pulling into the loading dock. I mean, it happens all over the city, and I think I think this is a non-issue for me. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I'm I guess I'm still confused. The contingency for the loading dock in the staff comment says, including uh, street maneuvering concerns. Does that mean it would, that engineering staff want us to prohibit what? Uh, yeah, so. Maneuvering, yeah, other, other than just direct in and out? So I, I believe, you know, their concern is, you know, they don't want a truck to like, pull up and then have to like reverse into the dock using the street. Um, they would like all of that maneuvering to happen on, on the property itself, not, not in the street. So um, okay. that was their main concern. They said, you know, it, their exact quote I think was not ideal. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the, the brunt of their concern. 
And this is Roxanne, sorry, I didn't know how to use that hand thing yet, but um, I did model the truck turning movements and they can totally maneuver and get in and out of the docks totally on site and not use the street at all. I have that, I just turned it off because it was getting cluttered, but I'll, I'll provide a separate drawing to show that movement. Good. Okay, do we have a motion? Uh, uh, is this just a design review, correct? Do we need a do we need a motion yeah, to accept the design motion? review? Yes. Okay, I'll make that motion if someone else will word it. The the motion is to uh, approve the loading dock contingent on resolution of engineering staff comments and approval. That's what I was thinking. So I'll make an approval motion. of the stormwater infiltration by the city stormwater engineer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was your motion, right? Yeah, it was. And I think you ought to second it, Kurt. Yeah, I'll Kurt second, second that then. There you go. <laughs> okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Thank you. Number four, specific implementation plan for construction of multifamily development, Newcomb LLC, 1312 John Q. Hammonds Drive. Yeah, I just wanted to provide um, just a brief summary of what I think is probably the um, the biggest issue um, associated with approving the SIP and give you our staff's thoughts on it before I turn it over to the developer to make his presentation. Um, Mayor Brar is very concerned about the lack of uh, public parkland available in the southwest quadrant of the city. And I certainly do not want to minimize that concern because I share the same concern. And also um, our Parks and Recreation Director, Matt Amundsen, is, is concerned about the lack of parkland in that area. And, and it's been identified as a need through city plans. Um, and so one of the things that um, Mayor Brar advocated for during the approval of the GIP was that there would be some sort of contingency associated with providing some playground equipment on the property. And um, when, it, when the GIP went to the city council, they did have a contingency, but it was worded such that the developer and staff worked together to identify um, an opportunity for public parkland on the site. And at the time of that GIP approval at that city council meeting, I spoke up and I said I had talked with the developer and that he was supportive of working with the city to identify some public parkland space. Um, since then, Matt Amundsen and I have had, a, had the opportunity to meet with Brett Newcomb along with his architect. And we did look at trying to carve out um, a corner park on, on this site. This entire property is 1.6 acres. And so we, what we were gonna be able to identify as public parkland was gonna be a very, very small area. Um, and it really is not, um, my understanding is that it's, it's not the parks department's first choice to have a lot of small little parks that they have to maintain throughout the city. And in fact, when I was working with the parks board and our park staff, when we were looking at creating a parks zoning district, we were looking at a minimum of three acres for that reason that um, it's really not ideal to have a bunch of tiny parks throughout the city. Um, based on some of the challenges with the site only being 1.6 acres and the size of the park that would be able to be created there, the developer has now submitted an SIP that does not include any public parkland. Um, there are some other challenges with creating a private playground in that um, private owners do not have recreational immunity. So there's a lot of concern from a private developer in providing a public playground facility due to the, their lack of recreational immunity, which of course the city does have. Um, what Matt Amundsen, our parks director, and I are proposing is that we not treat this parcel, the Newcomb property, any differently than we have treated the Market West apartment project, which is 240 units, Brown Point Reserve um, on Pleasant View Road, which I think is 86 units, the Foundry, which is a similar size, or the Galena apartments. None of those properties 
were properties where we took a hard line approach and said, you have to dedicate public parkland or we're not going to approve your project. And most of those are larger, or at least a couple of those are larger than this property. We would like instead to take a more proactive approach in identifying land that we wanna use for public parkland rather than being reactive to a development proposal and trying to force it on the developer. So that's our staff's opinion on this. We don't think that this is an ideal opportunity for public parkland in this location, but we understand the concern 100% and we wanna work with the parks board on some proactive options for creating public parkland. Um, and I see that um, John Schaefer has his hand raised. That's all I have to say, but also Brett Newcomb will wanna make a presentation as well. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I mean, I can wait till the presentation. The concern okay. is the parks has already looked in this area and there's no land. So this idea of looking at some other alternatives, they simply don't exist. And, and this, and it's been a horrible problem. And my concern here is not only does the land not exist, but we're now adding what was going to be a residential and business district sets of buildings into nothing but residential. So, you know, it becomes an escalating process. There's also a law that was passed about three years ago that says that a developer, if they pay a fee, that fee can only be used if it's used to directly, as in nearby directly affect or benefit that opportunity. Otherwise the money becomes worthless to the parks department. And if we can't do something that benefits that development, the money goes back to the developer in eight years. So I'm just raising a bunch of red flags because without something looking at other park areas and doubling the amount of, I think, people housing that was from what was the SIP to the, the GIP to the SIP just, just raises a lot of red flags. So I'll, I'll hear what people have to say, but that's my opening salvo. Okay. Could we get the presentation? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Thanks, yeah, hello everybody. Uh, Brett Newcomb, it's good to be back with uh, all my friends in Middleton. Um, yeah, Abby, well-spoken. Thank you for your comments. And John, we, we hear your comments as well. Uh, this is essentially a, a reapproval, And I just wanted to kind of reintroduce the project and kind of go through the history in the last year and a half of how we thought we would best develop this parcel uh, of land. Um, and Abby, not to, to correct you, but the, the actual size of this property is about 3.7 acres. Uh, I think you mentioned 1.6, it might have been misspoken, but um, you know, this is probably one of the last great pieces of property in Middleton. It's really an infill project or piece of property. It, um, as you can see on the map, the southern line of it borders up against Madison. And to our south is the business park, the Old Sock Trails business park with all the wonderful businesses on the west side of Madison directly across um, John Q. Hammonds to our east is the Marriott Hotel and the Convention Center. And then directly to the north is uh, Starbucks Coffee and all the great retail of Greenway Station. So it's really a fantastic uh, parcel of, of land. Uh, we love that it's in Middleton, not in Madison. Um, <clears throat> in my vision for this, from the day that we you know, made our initial offer, was, you know, can kind of the East Wash development, that urbanism of East Wash, all the great things about East Wash, can that come out to the suburbs? You know, that, so that was our vision. And what I mean by that is the development of East Wash is high density. There's not a lot of on-site parking. If you look at this site from the aerial, there's just a ton of asphalt that surrounds this property. Um, <clears throat> So not a lot of asphalt, uh, walking distance to amenities, you know, it, it, uh, buildings up to the street corner, you know, all the great things about urbanism. Can that be brought to the suburbs? So that was kind of our concept. Um, so Daphne, if you could go to the next slide, please. So this is what it looked like when we purchased the land or we made the offer on the land. The Marriott Hotel was using this as kind of outdoor container storage. I would call this kind of a blighted site. Um, you know, if you walk this property, it was a parking lot that was never parked on. It had containers. 
It had used uh, flower, you know, big planters are out there when, in the off season. Fork trucks are going back and forth. So, you know, it's a great piece of property, but it's really totally underutilized. Daphne? So back in April of 2020, we proposed a 100,000 square foot office building. And we thought this was a great concept. Uh, we, it was a four story office up on the street with a parking structure behind it. Um, if you go to the next slide again, Daphne. And we, and I think the, the plan commission that we presented this to and, and we as the developers and the investors just love this design. Um, you know, is, is really kind of a forward thinking design with some outside terrace and, you know, just up against the street. And it just, it met my expectations of like an urbanism design, kind of an East Wash concept. Well, then of course, COVID hit and office construction has stopped. So we had to kind of rethink what we, how we want to best utilize this particular site. Daphne? So in March of 2021, so last spring, we presented our, in our GIP submittal, um, apartments. And we had a five-story apartment to the left of, to the uh, west end of the site um, with townhomes presented up along John Q. Hammonds. So it really was about 171 units that was approved through the GIP process. Um, this particular design though, it didn't really meet my expectations of this urbanism that I really kind of fell in love with. And it also had a little bit of pushback from my neighbor to the west. You know, he was concerned about having a large, and he spoke at the public hearing, but you know, he was concerned about a large apartment kind of right in his backyard. So we rethought this, and in the process, we, I'm sorry, Daphne, next slide, please. This was the original kind of design that we had. Uh, next slide. So we rethought the whole process. This is where we are today, and this is the SIP um, submittal. So we think this is finally meeting all of our expectations. I, I think it's going to meet the expectations of the city. Uh, it definitely does of staff. Um, and I'm going to let uh, our architect, Kevin Burrow, kind of walk you through the, the architectural of this and the site plan. Um, and I'll talk about the amenities kind of towards the end of the presentation. But Kevin, you want to take it from here? All right. Thank you very much, Brett. Yes, as you can see on the site plan in front of you, we have reshaped the locations of the building and where the density lands and we have pulled this up to the street along John Q. Hammonds Drive and Holiday Avenue. And that's where our main focus would be as far as we have a five-story building proposed fronting along John Q. Hammonds with access to the underground parking along the south side of the property and having one entrance point, not visible to the street, but off the side of the building to the underground parking. And within this development, we are now proposing a total of 169 units with 123 being focused on that five-story tower in front. And then it's in essence a three-story building on the back side, sitting on top of the parking ramp, which has another 46 units in that. And the advantage of having underground parking under both of these structures is one continuous element has one main access point focused off of John Q. Hammonds Drive. And then we are allowed to have a lot more green space than with this development. It's not a sea of asphalt. We have great outdoor amenity space for both elements of the buildings. And we've created this courtyard element in between. And as you can see in the middle, we are proposing an outdoor pool then for all the residents to be able to access to. And you'll be able to directly walk off a second floor onto this deck where the pool is. And that transitions into the main floor of the tower on the Western side of the site. And we do have visitor parking and surface parking on the Southern and Western ends with access off a of holiday and also the main shared access off of John Q. Hammonds. With this slide, here's the underground parking for the basement, again, accessed off of the southern portion of the site. And we are having apartment units along the front, along the street on John Q. Hammonds to really activate the street and have those units have direct walkouts to be able to walk out of the unit down to the sidewalk and really be part of the community and engage along the street. And then all the parking is concealed behind that and basically underground completely. You can see the pool element just kind of pokes through in the middle, but then we are able to get 169 parking stalls. So one stall for every apartment is contained within the building. And then the main entry is that feature element on the corner of John Q. Hammonds and Holiday, which comes to a point 
which is reminiscent of the original office building design and the concept that really was key to Brett and his group creating a, a main feature at the intersection, which is really a prominent intersection here at this um, property. So we've got the main lobby space accessible there right off of the sidewalk, and then an open staircase leading you up to the second floor level where we have the amenity space. If you go to the next slide. So at the second floor level, you come up the open staircase, you basically have great views outward into the courtyard area of the site and also looking back towards the city of Middleton with that unique angled view out towards the front of the building. And then we have a large community space and exercise room bracketing the main entrance to the courtyard space. And then it's a mixture of studios, ones and two bedroom, two bedroom apartments around the perimeter. And then even the second building also has its own community space, which then leads directly out into the courtyard space as well. So both of the red elements on each of the towers is, is the common area amenities for the buildings. Go to the next slide. So second, this is third floor in essence, second floor of the second building, where it's a mixture of apartments. Next slide is very similar. Fourth floor is basically the same. And then if you go to the fifth floor, here is where we have, the other building disappears basically. It's only a three-story element. And then we've got another outdoor amenity space at that prow looking to the northeast, where we have another community space and a beautiful outdoor gathering space with vistas towards the city and basically even towards downtown Madison. So we're creating outdoor gathering spaces both at grade and in the upper story for all the residents to be able to access to. You go to the next slide. Here's the perspective view then as you look at it from the intersection of Holiday and John Q. Hammonds where you can see the outdoor gathering space up on the top floor level behind the glass railing. The main entry is prominent right there on the corner. A lot of glass basically highlighting the main entry to the building. So it's readily apparent as to where you would first enter the building. And then you can see the apartments along the base of the building, um, which have direct access to grade as well. And the exterior materials for this building, it's basically a combination of fiber cement or composite siding elements in a couple of different colors. We've got the white elements, more of a charcoal element, and then also a wood grain type element to really accentuate the facade. Then the base of the building is likely going to be a white precast stone element to really anchor the building to the ground and help um, brace the overall um, frame of the building. We go to the next slide. Here's another perspective view looking back. So now you can see the three-story element further up the hill. But again, all the parking that's underground is completely concealed we're able to create this wonderful outdoor green space in exchange for that. Next slide. So Brad, if you want to explain some of the amenities. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. <clears throat> um, so yeah, the middle uh, of the courtyard would have this pool uh, with us. It's called a sun deck. Um, it, it works out really well. It, it, it's kind of right over the parking structure, but we've created a foundation to kind of hold it. Um, Daphne. And then we're going to have, of course, some growing pavilions out in that courtyard. It's going to be very social. Um, all the, you know, the, a lot of the back doors of the apartments lead right out to this area. Daphne. Uh, a beautiful community lounge uh, for all the tenants to be able to use. Next slide. Um, a pet spa that's, you know, on the first floor. It's not in the basement. So it's actually a kind of a nice usable uh, space for people to wash their dogs or do a grooming. Next, um, a cyber cafe of some type uh, or kind of a we work kind of an environment for um, working out of the apartment but getting away in kind of more of a kind of an office setting. Next, a fitness center. And then this is, uh, we actually built this, this is one of our buildings, but this would be uh, the concept for the um, top floor of the uh, East Tower kind of that outdoor deck that kind of looks right down at Greenway Station and you know right towards Capitol Brewery. We're real excited about this. Um, and we've just named the project. So forever it's been 1312 John Q. Hammonds, um, but we just named it now. The, the development is gonna be called the West Edge. And uh, you can see the signage on the edge of that building, kind of a marquee sign. And the renderings are starting to kind of take shape now as we're starting to hone in on the landscaping and so forth. So this is our latest and greatest uh, rendition. Um, <clears throat> in closing, I just want to say three things. Um, 
we're currently not seeking financial assistance uh, from the city. And this uh, almost four acre parcel is currently assessed as agriculture. Uh, so once this development is done, the city is going to be, you know, receiving significant dollars in property taxes uh, versus where it's at today as agriculture. And, you know, I know a lot of off or apartment developments are receiving TIF assistance for whatever reason, either they're in a TIF district or whatever it is, but we are not. So it's, you know, we're, we're not asking for help on this project. Um, with respect to the park, so I had a great conversation with the mayor yesterday. He's in Maui. I called him up. It's like, you know, eight o'clock my time. It's two o'clock his time. Uh, we talked about, you know, I've been to Maui many times. So we shared some stories, but I'm not opposed to a park. Uh, matter of fact, we have identified space on this property with this development where we could put a park in, but it would be a private park. And the mayor said, and I, I agree with him, he said, uh, and we, you know, we've had market research done. The tenants in this apartment are going to be millennials or retirees. They're not families with kids. But as the mayor pointed out, which I agree with, the retirees, when their grandkids come over, they might want a place just to go and hang out. Well, we have the pool, of course, but I'm not opposed to putting in kind of a, a cool looking upscale park of some kind in that back, the southwest corner. Um, back there with, you know, if we could use part of my park fees, I'm going to pay over $500,000 in park fees. If the economics work out that I could use part of that to put this park in, the mayor is totally in favor of that. So I think if the economics work out, you know, we can make something happen there for some kind of a park. Um, as Abby pointed out though, you know, we don't want to make it public where we have to be responsible if somebody falls and gets hurt, but definitely for like users and users, families and things we can, um, continue the conversation for a park. Um, and then finally, I do have a request, and this is a request of plan commission. I wanna request that you waive the traffic impact analysis. Um, and for this reason, one, I'm right, the infrastructure around this property is designed for a lot of traffic. The right across the street is the convention center. Um, all the buildings to the south are office buildings. Office buildings are designed at three to four cars per thousand square feet of building. To my north, it's Greenway Station and all that parking is designed at six to eight cars per thousand square feet. An apartment is designed at one car per thousand square feet. It's like the most minimal use of traffic impact that you can put on this particular property. Yet <clears throat> all the infrastructure around it is designed for heavy traffic. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I just don't, really care to have to spend more money on you know analysis that's going to probably just prove my point so i <clears throat> i just like to ask the plan commission just to waive that you know it's just gonna have to spend money because i'm not getting tiff money from the city and um you know just kind of a, agree that yeah the traffic impact is gonna be low the infrastructure is already designed for a lot of traffic and um you know just keep this project moving forward so thank you i'm available to answer any questions Just one um, note on the TIA. I don't know if the plan commission has the authority to waive the TIA. My understanding is that that is a decision um, of the public works committee. I know that our public works director has occasionally done that. Um, have you spoken with Sean about getting the TIA waived? No, I haven't uh, spoke with Sean, but I'd be happy to. I wasn't aware that that was the policy. Are there any other questions, comments? Dan, um, whoever's driving the bus, can you go to slide 14? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that actually answers my question. With the slope of the parcel, at grade at that side, it looks like a four story because the, um, uh, half of the first floor, yeah, on the on the kind of back end of the five-story building, right there. Yep, it really does from the street look like a four-story building because it's sloping down. So you went through that really quickly, so I didn't quite get that. So yeah, that was my question. Okay. 
Any other questions? Actually, that was, I do have another question. Please. Um, in terms of the unit count, uh, the GIP submittal was for one multifamily building with 20 townhouses. And so we're counting that as 171 units. Do we know, Mark or Abby, did the public hearing specify a diff difference in unit type between townhomes and apartments or did it just list the number of units or did it not actually list? I think I that it specified, um, I can pull it up here and check on that. I think that it specified 150 of one type 20-ish of the other type, um, but when we looked at it with the current submittal, we thought that it was reasonably consistent. Okay. That makes sense. It's just the, um, the GIP had one building mainly, right? Actually, the GIP had two. Oh, okay. Or three. Right, because the, there was the L-shaped townhome building and then right. there's a drive between and then there's a smaller townhome building. Right. I, I like the uh, the design and the, uh, yeah, if you want to leave it there, that that picture was not in our package. I think that's, um, that's a really nice way of showing the site context and um, I like it. Thanks. Thank you, Kurt. John? Uh, yeah, I, I like the color drawing too. All we got was black and white. And I couldn't for the longest time figure out what that cube was in the middle until I saw the parking garage thing. You know, it, it, I understand the issue about land. I'm, I'm a parks guy, I, I chair the parks committee. So I, I got to keep on my bandwagon about this. I, I'm glad you talked to the mayor uh, I, I don't think we're looking for you to supply a park for the whole city, but your willingness to at least look at the tenants who are in there, that they and their grandkids or kids have an opportunity. I appreciate that. And, and, and I strongly encourage you to keep doing that. You know, if nothing else, pay the money and we'll figure out something to do with that money. But one way or another, uh, don't, don't let it go. There's a lot of people living in this area and these parks are important. And, and I do appreciate the opening green space in there, uh, but it, it just, you know, this is a, I just got to keep my mantra going. So other than that, I think it, it looks nice and good. I, I, you know, I really do like the pool and the open area in the center. And again, if you can make that a little more kid friendly because pools are not necessarily kid friendly. Yeah, so right. That would help. And, and certainly the rest of the commission, I hope to put the message out that we really need to solve this problem. If not through you, through somebody. Just to go back to the question really quickly on the hearing notice, I have it pulled up here. And the way that it was worded is the purpose of the rezoning is to allow for development on the site of one five story apartment building with up to 152 units and a three story townhome building with up to 19 units for a total of up to 171 units of housing. Thank you. And this is what, 168, 160? 169. 169, okay. And, and the buildings are similar enough. I think that it, huh. I think that works. Hmm. Are there any more questions, comments? Uh, with in, in uh, regards to the, the traffic analysis, then will, um, Abby, will you talk to uh, Public Works? Brett and see if that as to uh, if uh, Sean is comfortable making that decision or whether it needs to go to the Public Works Committee. Yep, I can talk with Sean about that um, first thing tomorrow morning. Another, uh, just a couple other things in addition to the recommendation that we have with the contingencies. I just want to note that we have we haven't reviewed the sign package that's being proposed, so we just now saw that for the first time. So that would be a separate approval as a minor SIP modification for signage. And then um, I don't know if the plan commission would want to consider a referral, still keeping on the same schedule, but um, whether the plan commission would want to consider referring this to the parks board for consideration of the use of park 
funds for a uh, private parkland space. Yeah, I think we should refer that to uh, to parks. I agree. I would make a motion that we do that. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? It, is Aye. the motion the SIP with all those contingencies, or just to refer it? Just to refer the, the park, the park part of it. Just to refer okay. the park part of it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that motion carries. Now we're back to the uh, SIP. I would uh, make a motion that we determine that the SIP is consistent with the GIP. Recommend approval to the council contingent on uh, the four items listed in the staff notes. Slavish will second that. All right, any, any other comments? Hearing none, oh, and them. and um, with ahead. the with the recognition that this is not approval of the signed package. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. And that is our agenda. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Schaefer moves. I'll second. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good job, aye. man. Good night. <laughs>